Although karate is a uniquely Japanese tradition today, its actual roots can be traced back to the tiny island of Okinawa and the Fujian Chinese-based Chuan Fa practices, which haphazardly found their way there during its old Rukyu Kingdom period. Once a compulsory practice among local Okinawan law enforcement officials, today its defensive concepts have evolved into a challenging competitive sport, a popular form of self-protection, and a vibrant cultural recreation. Having long been an effective adjunct supporting domestic law enforcement arrest methods in China, the discipline was brought into use during Okinawa's Old Rukyu Kingdom period after the prohibition of weapons and largely because of its effective tactical strategies in seizing and control. Handed down through oral tradition, and usually in an ironclad ritual of secrecy, much of its original history and unique practices have been lost in the sands of time. As a researcher, I believe the modern interpretation of karate, in its many variations, has evolved into something quite unlike that which its original pioneers had in mind when first developed. While I don't object to what modern karate has become, I can no longer support its interpretation of classical kata or the overly ritualized, rule-bound, and completely unrealistic application concepts being passed off as practical self-defense techniques. Having already done the research, I have saved the learner the time and trouble of wandering through an endless minefield of myth and mysticism and the quagmire of half-truths and self-serving propaganda. Having gained worldwide recognition, the KU method leaves no room for the kind of ambiguity exampled elsewhere in traditional karate. This is to say, the kind of ambiguity which has given kata such a bad name. KU represents a clear and precise pathway to mastery. If and when followed methodically, I am confident that the KU method will produce more far-reaching results than if instructors work toward the same goal independently. The presentation which lies before you is an exposition personifying one important part of what I believe this lost heritage represents, and I sincerely hope that it opens as many new and challenging doors for you as it has for me and for so many others. Deep roots strengthen the foundation of this art, and yet wings are what provide us with the means to continue forth on the journey of discovery. Practicing karate inconspicuously links us to its past. Through training together, we forge important bonds of friendship, and by living the art, we honor its heritage, which in turn keeps this spirit alive. I am but one of many researchers at the forefront of a challenging movement, trying to make a difference by restoring the essence of the old ways. If there's any truth to the rumor that, in doing so, I am helping to change the face of how traditional kata is perceived and practiced, then I hope it might serve to inspire others to think outside the box, cross train, and heed the words of Sir Isaac Newton, a man who after acknowledging the value of understanding the research and works created by notable thinkers of the past, wrote, If I can see any farther, it is only by having stood on the shoulders of giants. Remarkable insight comes from understanding the original work of the pioneers. Moreover, it also provides the opportunity to see continual change as an inevitable part of tradition rather than as a perceived threat. Tradition should inspire innovation, not limit it. Remembering the superb wisdom of Krishna Murthy, we are all working together in the true spirit of cooperation in which there is really no single authority. It is our mutual interest in understanding the original teachings that bring us together to find truth.